Welcome to King Said So, Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So. Africans can unite your Pan-Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Peace in Pan-Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters from all around the world. Welcome back to King Said So. I'm your host, King053, Mr. Easy Imali Ending in Nengi, and we're back at it again with another one. And this time around, we go to uh, Bloomfontein and go to Lloydport or whatever, where some community members have opted to grab some land where, whereby it has been vacant land. Now, this land is land that the government and the municipality has identified as land for developmental purposes. There is some people that have already moved into that land, but government has said no more, don't continue moving in there. But obviously our people thirsty for land then went in their numbers to go and occupy that land. Now, from a pan-Africanist point of view, I needed to tell you exactly what I see unfolding in front of us now. There is a lot of debate that we can have about land, how white people acquired, uh, stole, destroyed, and um, uh, conquered uh, our land, and why it is difficult right now for Africans to do the same. The problem is when, when the white people, the Dutch people specifically, landed in Africa, Land was for everyone. I keep on telling you this because people need to be rem- remembered, uh, reminded what actually transpired. Land was for everyone who lives in it. Now, where you find the people, that is where uh, that land belonged to those people. And as they move, the land underneath their ground become theirs. You understand what I'm saying? So when the Dutch people were negotiating with our then kings to say, we we need some land, we need to get some land. Our kings did not understand that concept that how can you say land is yours? Land is not yours, land is ours. This is the king's land occupied by our people. You can have land. The kings did not understand that these people were talking about fencing and barricading land because in their minds, Europe was already cut into sections. So they had that, uh, that Berlin conference that sat down there in 1884 to 85 where they were cutting down Africa to say, we need to cut Africa into small pieces. So France can own that corner of the West. Uh, Belgium can own the central part of Africa. Um, uh, the Dutch and the, the, the British can own the south, southern part of Africa and all of that. That is how these people cut our land. Long story cut short, that's not the debate for today. So we find ourselves in a situation where after people still land from us, they then introduce laws that make it difficult for us to acquire or, or take that land from them again. That's why I said to you guys, when I was angry when Julius Malema said, when EFF gets into power, they will protect agricultural land and they will make, they will, they will, they will, they will, they will make the state own the land and then equally distribute it to the people. That's, that's the problem I had. I had a problem with that word equally. How can you say you're going to uh, distribute something equally to the people? So my white counterpart can rape, kill, destroy, and take my land. And after taking my land, use it for uh, generational wealth when I suffer. And when my black government gets the land back, it then distributes it equally amongst us. There will never be equality between Africans and the Caucasian and the Dutch. That equality is artificial. It will never happen. When you want to see how to grab land properly, how to grab the resources of a, of a country, the natural uh, minerals of a country, back, the case studies are three countries, which is Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. 
we can say Zimbabwe also, but not 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 in the same way as those countries. And when Zimbabwe did it, you know, um, I think they did it in a clumsy way. But at least they got land because now the sanctions of Zimbabwe have been removed, so the people with the land can now work the land. So. We are hoping that Zimbabwe will start improving its economy because the sanctions on the country has been removed, even though the, the sanction on the president is still there. But anyway, that's a story for another day. Our people are in need of land. The problem with Africans that we are facing is that you will find the three generations in one household. You will find the grandmother there, you will find the, the, the child of the grandmother, and you find the children's children of the grandmother. That is not a problem if the land is vast. But you will find all of these three generations who have no uncle wako, no 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 makoko, no mamwako, na in that in that in that uh, small house of three bedroom, two bedroom, sometimes the uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, but he an RDP house. So our people are desperate to say, "Is manga tola just a space where I shall compose the parents, shy unkuwa, so I can hide my thing." It's about privacy also. We have we have grown up. That's why you see many of our children they are disturbed in their mind because adults are having sexual uh, intercourse in front of the children in the same bag in a bedroom. So you find your, you guys know, you guys know, I'm not telling you something new. So our people, I don't know how many times must the ANC show you that it does not care about you. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know how many times do we have to explain to people that pan-Africanism is the only route that can take us to liberating our people fully. There is no other. If we are not patriotic about favoring, giving advantage to black people, we will never get the land back. You can go and grab, they will send the same baby. Look at the red ends. The red ends are black people. Why? Political education is not in them. Pan-Africanism is not in, the, in them. They are the same people of the same community are the ones that are taking uh, uh, the, the, the shakes and destroying them. Just just li listen to what the community is saying and I'll come back for my final thoughts. That's not the law. That's not how it works. Power. You promise people land. Now they are fighting for land. You are nowhere to be seen. You as a policeman should be saying you are not to stand, Sigamon. How subsidy is too much. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't come here no, we allow you to do anything, but you can't just come here and take someone's property without their consent. It's wrong. We took them out. No way. There are people who left their IDs in there. There are cars. There are cars. There are furniture. Look at the furniture down there. The person is at work. How are they supposed to? The police is out of the HIV. My guys, we're not going to work this thing out if you're not listening. My brother, I'm telling you now, these are not red ends, and I know what I'm talking about. These guys, some of them, some of them. They are not even red ends. These people were hired to come and cause chaos here. So, do people not have to go to work just because the red ends are coming to take the shake? Is that the law? You take someone's property without their presence. Is that the law? That's theft. It's a crime already. Because now, the person took a loan to get those sheets and poles to make that check. And suddenly now when they come, the check is gone. They are left with a loan to pay. You took the check somewhere. Where is the check going? Is the person going to get their checks? That's theft. So my brother, I'm still going back to the law. The law says, no, listen, listen. The law says when you evict someone on an occupied land, even if it's legally so, you need to allocate the person for another place where they can crash or wherever. So where are you taking these people? 
Because this land was approved. I got papers here. This land was approved a long time ago as a township development. These people didn't come here hard headed. They know what's going on here. So where are these people going to sleep tonight? Where are these people going to sleep because look, they are dead. They are dead. dead. It's not fair, guys. It's not fair what is happening. It's not fair because it's blood. What am I going to get my shit? No, it's only us. No, let's not do this, guys. We need to move our Where is their property? Now we're coming from work. We Where is their property? See our places. The very same white people, tomorrow they're going to fire us. When we come to look for our properties, guys, please, please, let us take our stuff because we don't have the money to go and collect the, our stuff where we don't know. We don't know where we're taking our stuff to. Please, we ask you, we're not fighting, we obey by the laws. Please, we need to take our stuff. Now, please, simple. Can we take our stuff? Our debt is there, our check and our late 10,000 rent loan. Please, All give us our stuff now. I, I, I think you made your point here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now, now, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, leader. now because there is a court order yes. that you know about, yes, which we didn't get read to, they didn't even translate it. I, I don't know who yeah, got no, it, but, uh, but some but of us there, didn't hear there, it. There, yeah. is, there is a court order yes. against you guys, yes. Now, for, for you to be here, I think you made your point, yes. You must, I mean, uh, move from this place to where. To where? No, listen. To where? Where are you coming from? No. Let me give you time to move away from here. Ten minutes from now. Otherwise, we now you guys can say whatever you want. We are scattered as Africans. Religion has scattered us. Classism has scattered us. Uh, so, uh, you know, social status has scattered us. So it is everyone for himself. And I have told you many times, I said, South Africans are not willing to die to get back the land. Clean my dresses quickly. Huh? South Africans are not willing to die to get their land back. That's why you can see the police of which you are outnumbering one for one as a community, you know, they will arrest one person, beat one person up to make an example. This is what the apartheid government did to us. This is what they did to us. They will make an example with one person, arrest the person, throw them in the van, beat them up. You see blood and you're like, oh, I don't want to go through that. Why? You are not willing to die for that land. So as long as we don't educate ourselves, ourselves properly, to say, listen, people, we don't want cowards. When we say we're going to take land, and we go and we hear that the rep ends are there. Rep ends, by the way, I should have started by saying this, it's a company, it's a security company that applies, uh, that, that applies different types of services uh, for many different things. So rep ends is just a company, but that company does not have a lot of people. They will come and take people from your land, from your community. They just call the Yemen, go and get five people, go and get 20 people, call different people, and you will see people that you know coming to destroy your shed. People that you know. And the problem is that the community might retaliate against those people because when the red end goes and the red jacket uh, overall goes, you are left in the community to answer to what you were doing there. So as long as we don't organize ourselves and say, listen, we are ready to die. That must be the first ten sentence of every gathering that has to do with land. We say, listen, we are ready to die. We need to organize ourselves militarily because this thing of throwing stones is not going to help. We need to get a barbed wire fence. We need, to, we need to be armed. 
we need to get a strategy. Let's 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 pour oil here. When the cars come, who's going to who's going to uh, run the other side and uh, pour petrol on the cars? You know, be militant in your approach to these things, and you will see the red end will never come again. But if you are not willing to die, if you are not willing to plan these things properly, and remember when you are doing this in in a in a community of cowards, they're going to take you out. That is how we were made. The the the, bimp, the snitch was awarded in the apartheid days. So they're gonna come out and say, Yo, King said we must buy petrol, King said we must be armed, King said we must um we must start this side when they come this side, we must come from the top. King said we must throw stones. King said we must bring our children and put them in the front line. King, 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 this king. The next thing you see, king in court. And king getting what? Six, four, five years in prison. My family does what? Suffer. Breadwinner, gone. That is what you, you're going to get in our communities. Because why? The, 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 there is no political education to our people to understand where are we in the ladder of life as black people? Where are we? Are we really in power? Are we really in power? The ANC that was making so much noise about getting land back from 1994 to 2024, seriously nothing has happened. Why are those people allowed to grab land, but those people are not allowed to grab land? Why, why can those people take land and the whole community goes there and they are supported, they get electricity and other peace, but these people can What is going on? And I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, you have to roll with gorillas. The people that you see hungry for land, the class structures, the class levels in South Africa has made sure that those are the poorest, poorest people that know nothing about military strategies. Nothing. Hungry, no land. These same police that are arresting you, they've got an issue of land. They are house, they can't even afford houses. They buy a car, they are, they are, they are they almost use the vulgar word. They buy a car, they can't buy a house. They buy a house, they can't buy a car. The, the same people working for the red ends, that is people in the community, they've got nothing. So our people are not politically conscious. Nothing. No political consciousness in our people. You see what is happening, ladies and gentlemen. So for me, I say we need we can do this small land, land grabs nonsense that is happening there. But for me, that is not how I would implement my strategy. It needs to be well thought of and well planned and uh, well executed. It's easy to defeat these people as the community. Very easy to defeat these people. At the end, you know that you you are preparing for what they are. Because the police and the red ends, they are easy to defeat. Easy to defeat. If, if you come in numbers, proper numbers, then remember, you must be willing to die. If you are not, don't come. Don't come because you cannot grab land like you're grabbing someone uh, sweets. It's not a, it's land. It's the way of life. They know that land is the it, it does what qualifies you of being a human in, in the world, having a piece of land. There's pride in having land. So I'm saying to you guys, I don't agree with um with uh land that is going to be owned by government um, just to be equally distributed amongst everyone. I don't like that idea. I want the, I want the way that the, the government will own the land and distribute it to Africans first than the rest. If you use those words, I know that we as Africans will be favored. Why? Because historically we've been We've been disadvantaged when it comes to the land issue. Don't tell me you're going to equally distribute land between me and my colonizer. Don't tell me because my colonizer is doing agriculture, so you are leaving that land alone. I can also do agriculture. I can also do farming. 
that is what I'm saying to you guys. But you know, what do I know? What do I know? I'm just a just a content creator on YouTube who's trying to open a Pan African School of Economics, Technology, and Agriculture. We are trying to teach political science. We're trying to, uh, to teach a lot of things that is going to impact our African children coming in the future. We have to prepare them. The Pan African School is one of the ways that we have to break through to the next generation. If we don't do things like that, our children will still grab the land the way we were grabbing it, and it will never work. What do you think about this land grab issue? Huh? Hmm? The, gov the black government is stopping. Do you see how far we have to go? So forget about um, one Africa, one land, one Africa, one president, one Africa, one currency, one Africa, one army, when you can't even grab land in your own country. The beginning there, in the beginning, you can't even grab land in your own country. You can kill, you can kill Pakistanis, Zimbabweans, Nigerians, and do what you can't grab land in your country. You can't do anything in your country. Just a small piece of land. Remember that they are not cutting land properly. This is your 30 by 13 meter uh, uh, yard. No, you, you're getting, a, if you are lucky, 12, 12 meters. You're getting nothing. It's not even land. You can't, you can't even be proud of saying you've got a land because you're going to stay there without uh, toilets, without water and electricity for an extended period of time. Yo, my African people, Zakala Manch. Zakala Manch. Anyway, thank you so much. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, my African people. I appreciate the support from everyone that's giving um, the support to the channel. I appreciate it so much. Leave your thoughts on the comment section. I like engaging with uh, uh, with you. Sometimes it's just too much like the, when I speak about you, that's my life, my life. That's the one, like, key, 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 but it's expected. So we are in a place where we can disagree and still be united as Africans. They will never agree with everything. It's normal. It's normal. But in our disagreement, uh, we don't fight to kill. We fight to correct or to persuade in another way. So it is okay when we have a different view on things. We should not be fighting to kill each other because we've got different views. As long as those views don't harm and kill our own kind, it's okay. If you believe what Julius Malema said is all right by using the word rubbish, that's okay. If you believe that Naledi was wrong in saying what she said about her, her pregnant situation and everything, if you think she's wrong, that's also fine. But I am allowed to express my opinion. It's my opinion. You have your opinion, and I respect it. You understand? Don't have to insult. Don't have to do anything. But that it looks like that's becoming the trend with um, the EFF because they are showing us in Parliament. If they don't agree with you, they protest. And I see it in the comment section. And I'm a pro EFF person. Every time I've been attacked, I'm asking myself, I don't love do they know I'm pro EFF. Oh, they don't know. EFF is probably, um, I don't know what's going to happen between now and the election, but that's probably the, the, the party I'm going to vote for. I believe they are a better alternative than the ANC. But their behavior and some of their followers' behavior shows me which is, there is no discipline in leadership. Leadership must always lead by uh, disciplined behavior. And should you not agree with someone, once you start insulting them, it shows that you don't, you are not using your superior logic to reason your point um, clearly to the other person. The other person say, no, I, I respectfully disagree with you. I think what you are saying is wrong. Here's my point one, two, three. And I might say, oh, I think, I think you are right. But if when you insult people, people become defensive. And I'm not in the game of insulting people. I'm here to build one Africa, one land, one Africa, one language, one Africa. That's the direction I'm going. Understand? Politicians are always going to disturb us in this core, in this root cause that we are going to. They will always divide us. Let us not forget that we are black first before we are Christian. 
We are black first before we are EFF, ANC, ACDP, uh, um, MK, and whatever. You are black first. What is best for us as Africans? So the other arguments become the pity things because we know at the end, the, only, the end goal is to push the black agenda, the African agenda. Till we meet next time, don't forget to pray. And after you pray, stand up, African child. Do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in pen, Africanism. I salute you.